Hey guys, welcome back Dizzle in Motion. Today I just wanted to do a quick video on some military aviation. Now, some of you may have seen this or maybe you have not because it's been in development for the last couple of years. And we're talking about the UH-60 Blackhawk that is aging since 1979. The Blackhawk has pretty much been the workhorse for most of the military uh, when it comes to rotary. It's replaced the Huey before that, and each time, obviously, with each generation, you get better technology and more capability. Well, the Army has decided recently, a couple years ago, that they wanted to upgrade that fleet to the next generation. So they had multiple contracts being submitted, as you would expect, and the winner was the Bell V280 Valor. So they actually won the contract back in 2023. They've been doing some experimental flights with it, adding to it, detailing it and it looks like they're in production with the first units slotted for action here in the middle of 2025 so i just wanted to review it with you guys real quick some of the advantages that the v280 is going to have over the blackhawk so the numbers don't lie you can look at it straight away the max speed on the valor is 300 knots which is about double that of the blackhawk coming in at about 150. It's lighter and more efficient because of the fact that the material composites they use on the Valor are stronger, so they can make them smaller, lighter, but yet the capacity for carrying inside is nearly identical to the existing Blackhawk. But it doesn't just stop with speed performance. The payload is actually better also. All the way down to the lift capacity is rated at already over 10,000 pounds versus the Blackhawk currently is around 9,000. So it's either equal to, edges out, or downright doubles the capability statistically of what the current Blackhawk offers. It's got a combat range of 500 to 800 nautical miles, a ferry range of over 3,000, which makes it great for in-theater operations. It can get around. It's a lot easier to transport itself through ferrying than you know having to deliver the choppers in theater using other apparatus so that's great and some of the negatives are they're 43 million dollars each versus the regular blackhawk run somewhere between six to 11 million so you're looking at four to seven times more expensive per unit but again these have the capability above and beyond one of the things that the new systems have is the pilots just like most of the modern generation fighters that we have now within the helmet it allows the pilot to utilize cameras around the aircraft and they can see up to 360 degrees so they can see behind them below them on the sides using the technology within their helmet so that's also a huge benefit threat assessment uh, even if they're just doing rescue troop drops stuff like that it'll make it a safer proposition to use this aircraft now it's a tilt rotor design, which most of you, if you're familiar with the Osprey, that's the first thing you're going to think about. And I worked for a lot of years with the military. I've read all the horror stories. I've worked with Osprey crew members that did experimental stuff. Every time the Osprey would have a, an accident, uh, they go back to the board and they try to make it better and fix it. And I've spoken to those guys and even the guys that are on those crews, a lot of times they, they have all kinds of funny sayings and superstitious stuff they do. So I hope and I would think with the newer technology that they worked out all the bugs because as soon as I show this to most people, my other military friends and whatnot, the first thing you start laughing is go, okay, so it's going to be a crash test dummy Osprey for the army. And uh, hopefully that's not the case, but uh, yeah, it's tilt rotor design. So you basically get all the benefits of vertical takeoff, being able to get into small, concise areas without needing a major airfield, but then it can translate into flying more like an aircraft. And that's why we get the higher speeds and, bigger efficiency and range. Anyways, what do you guys think about this? You think it's pretty cool? Um, most of you have probably never been on a Blackhawk before, but I have been on many of them. And it's just, it, they're great. They're bulletproof platform. Uh, there's no reason really to get rid of them all at once. I don't think that's going to happen. It'll probably take a decade to phase them out if they even phase them out all the way. But is this a good expenditure at over $40 million a pop? Or any of my veterans that are watching these videos, do you guys have any experience or input on this? Would you want to get in there? It holds up the 14 troops. So these are deployable for combat missions, rescue missions, everything. It's a full service replacement, not a niche thing for the Blackhawk altogether. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. If not, check out in 2025 when you start seeing about these things. You're going to kind of already have the inside scoop of what's going on. Thanks for watching the video. Catch you guys on the next one.